Hi guys, Cornel de Tweer. Once again, welcome to my workshop. I recently finished my Rubo style workbench and when I started my journey probably 15 months ago, I decided I really wanted to have um, wooden screws on my workbench. Now to import the Lake Erie ones from the US proved to be prohibitively expensive, so I decided to make my own. So I made a, a leg vise, a set of moxen vise screws, and also a wagon vise um, screw. And I will want to share with you in I think three videos on how I made these different screws. So let's come a bit closer and have a look. Subsequent to finishing my bench, um, I also had an order for a few screws from, from some friends here in South Africa. So I'll rather show you the screws that I'm currently making. On the left hand side, we've got the one for the leg vise. Once done, it will be 600 millimeters long, uh, 64 millimeters in diameter, and the pitch between the threads is 12 and a half millimeters. However, it's a twin start screw, so actually that thread, when it comes around, comes to, to this one over here. So for every full revolution of the screw, you will have 25 millimeters of advance. The second one is what I call a face-wise screw. It's about 550 millimeters um, long, 50 millimeters diameter, 10 millimeter pitch, also twin start, so you get about 20 millimeters advance per revolution. Then you've got the same 50 millimeter um, screw, just a little bit shorter with a different sized nut for the wagon vise. And then lastly, the Moxon vise set is about 300 millimeters long, 40 millimeters in diameter, and seven and a half millimeter pitch, but also twin start. And that gives you 30 millimeters of advance per revolution. Just to show you what a twin start looks like, um, here's a test piece that I made out of pine. If you look over here on the front end, you can see the one end of the one thread starts on this side and the other one starts on this side. So if you were to draw a line here in the valley, You can see by following it, you basically have two, two threads that it's twisting around each other around the screw. So in these videos, I will show you how I made this face vise screw. The wood that I used for the screw is um, called Rhodesian teak. It's a very hard, quite dense and heavy indigenous African wood. Um, very um, high wear resistance, it's quite strong. And the one thing I like about the Rhodesian teak, better even than the maple, is that it is actually much less susceptible to moisture changes. So you've got less of a chance of it binding due to moisture changes in the wet season. Maybe just to close up on the threads, and just get the focus right. And you can see it is actually pretty nice. The hub that I've got on here is called Tambuti, and also the end caps on the handle is the same Tambuti, also an indigenous South African screw. Ah, South African wood. Here's a close up of the threads on the nut as well, also pretty nice and crisp. So here's the jig that I'm using. It's basically based on a design by Shop Notes 105, issue 105. There was a router lathe in that one. Um, I think Woodsmith Plants still sells the plants to that jig. So yeah, basically I modified it slightly for, for, my, for my design over here. Basically consists of a carriage where the router is mounted on that runs on these two rails. It's attached to the lead screw with two nuts that's embedded in there. And as the machine moves backwards and forwards, 
if you look at on the inside you can see the the headstock over there with two pins and then on the tailstock side it's just a stationary sharpened bolt that goes into the, the back end of the blank. Then on the front end, sorry, the lead screw has got a 2.5 mm pitch and then to convert it to the desired pitch on my screws that I make, I basically have a 10 tooth gear connected to the lead screw. That one in this case drives a 40 tooth gear, so that's a 1 to 4 ratio. And then, if you look closely at the back, the 40 tooth is connected to a 10, which then drives a 20 at the bottom that's connected to the headstock. So let's have a look. I have prepared my stock off camera. It's basically just 51 millimeter square that I turned into an octagon on the table saw. So let's just get that mounted here. So the carriage is back at the starting position now. I'll cut the thread in three passes, but progressively going a bit deeper. Just to save some time, I'll put it on a bit of a fast speed. There we go, first pass is done. Let's have a look. For some reason, the Rhodesian teak leaves this little fluff behind, but luckily it's not too difficult to get that out. There you can see the first thread is done. What we now need to do is to turn it 180 degrees to cut the second thread. Let's have a look here on this side. To turn it 180 degrees, I must make sure that I turn the headstock wheel, which is the one there at the back, exactly 180 degrees. So that is what those two little marks are there for. Just need to get those two ones perfectly aligned. Okay, and I can take the big wheel off. With the big wheel off, we can now turn it exactly 180 degrees around. My next markers are on, on the spot, and then the big wheel can go back again. Also marked on the wheel where it was located on the drive wheel just to make sure I get the same tooth engaged same place again with the big ear back in place and the router back at the starting spot we can now do the second thread There we go, let's have a closer look. As you can see, it's quite fluffy this thread, but actually not too difficult to get that stuff out. Closer look, and then actually it looks relatively cool, relatively good. Here is one that I cleaned up yesterday, and as you can see, the threads is looking pretty good. So the next step will be to take it to the lathe to sand the thread smooth a bit, and also to finish up the, the top so top part of the screw. So let's go and have a look over there. Over here, just putting a chamfer on the front of the screw, rounding over the top section, making a T 
tenon for the eventual hub and then lots of sanding, even sanding the threads as well. And just some sanding of the threads in real time. Cool, that's it for this video. In the next one I'll show you how I made the hub, the handle and the gator. Until next time, God bless.